Brian Shorthouse, the founder of the Liberal Conservative think tank Bright Blue, who this week announced he's quitting the Tory party uh, because the party's betraying millennials on issues like housing. What's your case? So, actually, I'm standing down as the CEO of Bright Blue, um, not necessarily quitting the Tory party. Uh, part of the reason for that is because I've been running it for eight years and, you know, you need, after a time, fresh energy and leadership. Uh, by the way, I think that also applies to government and Rishi Sunak missed an opportunity to bring in fresh talent, uh, ministers uh, who are very experienced, into the Cabinet and change the face um, of the party. But another reason, yes, is that I am quite disillusioned with the direction of the Conservative government. Um, <coughs> and it, it strikes me that, you know, my generation, millennials, people in their 30s, if you don't have parental support, then, you know, the things that Tories say is a passport to the good life, raising a family, uh, owning a property, those things have become even more out of reach. Uh, and the Tory party have had 12 years in which to try and fix those things. But the cost of owning and renting a property is high as ever. The cost of childcare uh, is cripplingly expensive. Um, uh, and raising a family, you know, a lot of women who are, you know, increasing number are going to university, uh, they don't obviously want to sacrifice all the great strides they've made in their career when, when they have children, but a lot of them are finding they're having to mm. uh, as a result of the cost of childcare. So I'm just disillusioned because I think after 12 years of Tory government, at least we should have had some progress on it, mm. and we haven't. Um, and, you know, if the Conservative Party wants future voters, um, you know, home ownership, for example, is strongly associated with uh, voting for the, for the Tory party, then a lot of those people, you know, are just not going to... The long-term sustainability of the Tory party, I think, is at risk as a result um, of, you know, people not being able to raise family, not being able to own a property. You know, the, the birth rate, for example, has been going down quite substantially because mm. a lot of people who don't have parental support are stuck in limbo. They want to go to the next stage of life but mm. feel they haven't got the financial security to do so. Yes, no one's going to really want to have a kid if they're sharing with flatmates into their 30s or, or if they don't have the spare room or the facilities. But do you think that the government just doesn't understand this? Because in the last 10 years, there have been two attempts at planning reform. Robert Jenrick's reforms, which, of course, were, were shot down after that che Cheshire and Amersham by-election. But also uh, there were the Nick Bowles re reforms back in the uh, coalition era that were also defeated. Every time the government's tried to build more houses or liberalise plans, or, or, or go for reform in these areas, it's been shot down. Yeah, and, you know, the Tory party's main electoral base tends to be older people, homeowners, um, and because of the way that the market works, you can kind of understand why people are NIMBYs. They don't want, you know, the homes that they've saved a long time for, invested a lot of money into, uh, the value of those things to go down. And obviously, if you have a lot more properties spoiling the view of your uh, particular home, there's a risk there um, uh, to, to the, to the long-term prosperity of, uh, of, of, uh, of you and your, and your house. But what I would say is the housing issue is not just a supply problem. And yes, particularly in the London, London and the South East, more homes definitely need to be built, and there's lots of evidence around that. It's also a distributional problem. And, you know, for a long time, uh, particularly because of low interest rates, buy-to-let investors... You know, I think baby boomers, for example, one in six of them now own a second home. So a lot of people, because of those low interest rates, have been able to snap up properties which traditionally would have gone to first time buyers. Mm. Um, so we also need to think a lot more about taxation and the mortgage market to make sure that people who don't necessarily have parental <coughs> support but have modest but stable incomes can afford to get onto the property ladder. Mm. Uh, and we need to think much more radically about that. It's not just a right. supply side issue. Yeah, but can, I come, can I come in there? Okay, so another one of our amendments. By the way, I'm delighted that you're not quitting the Tory party, Ryan. I misheard and I thought you were quitting over this. I'm delighted you're not. Um, uh, another amendment that we have is to look at ways to free up the housing market. Is there more that we can do with last-time sellers? Is there more help the first-time buyers? Actually, when you're saying what, the cons what have the Conservatives done, actually house prices have been reasonably affordable in the last 10 years because although houses have gone up, partly because we've been printing money, there's been very low cost of interest rates. So actually uh, the cost of... You, let me just say... House prices have been affordable in the last no, no, 10 no. years. Uh, listen, no, I'm saying the, the cost of mortgages has been uh, reasonably right. stable because although house because prices have gone rates. up, yeah. uh, interest rates have been very low. So another thing that we could be doing, for example, Tom, in this country is looking at the creation of a long-term mortgage market. So if I buy a house now, I get a 30-year fixed rate. 
rather than, I'm on a five-year fixed rate, but why not get a 25-year, 30-year fixed rate so you know what you're paying over a much longer Isn't period of time? Isn't one of the big issues that we found, though, because of this over-leveraging of so many people, because these assets are now so extraordinarily expensive, so yeah. much more expensive than they were even 20 yeah, yeah. years ago in terms of times of average yeah, yeah. salaries and the rest of it. Depends where you are in the country, but, but certainly in the south east Certainly in the south east sure. uh, it's so. It's it now. It's now the case that an interest rate of of, of five or six percent, something that would be traditionally yeah. normal, is paid. now crippling because yes. people are so over leveraged on this debt. Yes, absolutely. So again, you know, we want to see a new. I want to see a new era of council housing. I want a new a new era, era of mm. affordable housing, especially on the island, because young islanders, you know, we can't even afford the eighty percent discount rate. We need mm. realistically a sixty percent discount rate. But a lot of the things that Ron is talking about, I don't disagree with. But the mm. fundamental problem is just. Giving more permissions to developers, Ryan, does not achieve anything. Yeah, we have to find a way of getting the developers to build on brownfield sites. The win-win, the nirvana for this policy, my friend, is where greenfield is really quite expensive, but brownfield becomes cheap and plentiful, which it is. And once you get that, you will then have a building boom. I'll give you a tiny example in the Isle of Wight, Camp Hill. It's a prison, been empty for nine years. The government has sat on it, cost like five million a year for upkeep all these empty prisons. It's a complete waste of money. Why not sell it to the Isle of Wight Council at a price that we can afford and we'll start building proper affordable homes for young islanders, mm. getting them off the list. It's quite near the county town of Newport, so the transport's doable. We're not hitting greenfield sites. Mm. So quicker government decision-making aligned with our amendments is going to make a big difference. And yet one of the big problems when it comes to that is that because of the system of mm -hmm. sort of local consent that we currently have mm -hmm. uh, and planning permission as, as it currently stands, is urban areas are much harder to build in because they've got more neighbours, more neighbours to complain, no, whereas a green field no, doesn't have see, so many neighbours. No. 